So what I'm holding in my hand is a culture flask with uh, cells, just a few stem cells from cows. And we are going to make a, a billion cells of them. And that is you, that's what you see here in this cabinet. Here are huge versions of this flask with uh, millions, and if not a billion of cells in all these um, big um, 10 layer um, culture. Flats. And then we take all those cells, if you come along with me, you will see that this is the next phase and we take all these cells and make small muscle tissues out of them. Um, and you see that here they're in a ring shape um, and they're about uh, a couple of millimeters wide and um, a couple of centimeters long and this is already the muscle tissue. And then we take all these small tissues um, to produce a hamburger um, from it. And here you see in this freezer the first batches of muscle tissue that eventually are going to make the entire hamburger. So every, um, every um, uh, tube here contains a piece of the hamburger. And then we're going to uh, assemble those pieces into one hamburger and cook it and eat it. And that will be the first hamburger ever made out of stem cells. People might think this is a, a sort of a crazy way to produce meat, but um, it's inevitable because the, the way we produce meat right now through livestock is not sustainable. It's not good for the environment. It's not good for animals. And we actually are not going to produce enough to meet the world's demand. So this is one of the alternatives and might be actually the alternative. It's a set of people, ideas, technologies that have come around uh, this central idea that you can use the potential of cells to produce tissue, to produce muscle uh, in various forms that can be consumed as food, that can be eaten as equivalent to or similar to or as an alternative to meat as we have it today. It's typically um, articulated in the context of a diverse set of grand political challenges that, that face the world today around climate change, around health, around animal welfare. Different people configure it slightly differently. But at the same time, your core question is, is what is cultured meat? And to me, that's still an open question. There's people within the field, people who produce cultured meat, that do assert definitions of what they believe it to be. And there is a, a sort of a dominant framing of what cultured meat is that, that you certainly see from people like Mark Post, um, of cultured meat being meat as we know it today. But I'm open to the idea that you could see other people within the field articulating totally different accounts of what cultured meat is. And also very much as a sociologist, for me, I'm interested in, in culture, I'm interested in society. So for me, the definition of something, the meaning of something comes not necessarily in its physical makeup, but in how it's used in society. So, so for cultured meat to be just meat as we know it, for cultured meat to be a foodstuff, a genuine foodstuff, then it needs to be something that people eat. It's not a property of the biology, what it is, it's a property for me of how it's used. So, so it's, a, it's an emergent technology, it's in flux, it's exciting, it picks up on a lot of really important issues that need to be considered around, around global politics today. Um, but there's flexibility there. It's an unfolding story, and I think we're still, we're still not at the beginning. I've been watching this now for eight years, and there's definitely been movement, there's been change, but there's still some distance to go. There is quite some intense taste. It's close to meat. It's not that juicy, but um, uh, the consistency is perfect. Texture, the the, the mouth feel has a, a feel like meat. The mm -hmm. you know what Hani was just saying, 
the absence is, I, I feel like the fat, you know, like it's, 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 it's a leanness to it. But, but the bite, you know, feels like, uh, you know, a conventional hamburger. Well, a lot has changed. Um, the, the, the product that we presented in 2013, you might argue that was a little bit early to present it, um, but we felt it was necessary. The, uh, there wasn't any fat in it, um, and some of the culture methods that you were used for that hamburger uh, are actually not really sustainable, and you cannot use them in a production method anyway. So... Um, we are gradually getting rid of um, some of the components that are still derived from animals, um, such as blood in the culture medium, um, uh, but also the, um, um, the gel in which we temporarily um, keep the cells um, to let them self-organize. That's also animal-derived, so we have to get rid of all those. Uh, and we've worked hard on those. Then we have improved the uh, the protein quality, and more specifically the myoglobin content. Um, and we have added fat tissue to it. And and the fourth thing that we did is um, change the production method, especially the production of cells, so that you can scale it up to a very large scale. Yeah. So so for me the the the. The two most important aspects are that we will be able to um, to produce meat with using much much less resources. Um, so either we produce uh, uh, the same amount of meat with much less resources, or we use our resources to produce much more meat to uh, meet the, the the increasing demand in India and China, and at some point other wealthy nations. Um, the second is that livestock. Um, is associated with quite a um, an extensive greenhouse gas emission. Um, so if we want to curb that greenhouse gas emission, then uh, culturing meat through our technology is the way to go, I think. Um, and third, which is, you know, for some people more important, but for me is sort of third in that row, is uh, animal welfare. You would have to, uh, you can keep much less animals so they are, um, kept under um, extensive husbandry conditions um, and you know you don't have to slaughter that many animals or don't have to slaughter animals at all. So obviously many of the benefits around cultured meat are premised upon what it will deliver in the future but at the same time I think even in the here and now the idea of cultured meat, the emergence of this technology provokes people to reflect upon current meat eating practices, think about what meat is, how it relates to their health, to the environment and animal welfare. So I think almost regardless of where the technology goes, and I think it's quite open where the technology might go, I think even now these debates can be productive if, if entered into in the right spirit. The, the purpose of that uh, unveiling in, um, in 2013 was, first of all, to tell everybody, you know, this is possible, we can do this, and we need to work on this. And, and second, it's really necessary because we are... Uh, facing a huge crisis if we don't do anything about um, livestock beef production or meat production in general. So um, that goal has been reached um, and the, the goal of the next unveiling would be to have a commercial product that um, has already been tasted by uh, taste panels that is um, approved by the, the, the Food and Drug Administrations of several countries. So that will take another couple of years, I would think doesn't make sense to uh, unveil anything before that. My own work hasn't focused on this yet, but there have been people who have conducted a set of focus groups with various publics on their perspectives and cultured meat. And there's also been work done, and I have been more involved in this, at looking at accounts on web forums and responses to, to, to social media. Generally, certainly within the focus group research, you see, as you probably expect, a diversity of opinion. You see people for whom this is clearly a very exciting idea, clearly buy into the issues that stake around the environment, around animal welfare, and clearly see this as something that they would embrace. You also see another set of people for whom this is worrying in all kinds of ways, or perhaps unnecessary, either unnecessary because they think there's other solutions, or, or, or maybe they don't think that animal welfare is a problem that, that, you know, that eating meat is fine, basically. Um, and then, of course, there's another great many people who are somewhere in between, who have uncertainties or ambivalences around, around the technology, want for more information, 
um, want to see what happens. Uh, there is a, a thread within some of these focus group accounts that say that the more that you talk to people about cultured meat and more that you talk to people about the way that cultured meat could address important issues that we've mentioned many times, that people become more open to the idea of supporting cultured meat. Now for me as a social scientist I've got to look at right how do I how do, how do I interpret that what do we understand from that and does that mean that the more people hear about cultured meat the more they support it I, I wouldn't I'm always cautious I wouldn't want to go that far yet I think that that shows that the more people learn about cultured meat um, there is more potential for them to adjust their opinion and depending on what the conversation about cultured meat is depending on Upon what what they hear, what they say, what people what is said to them about cultured meat could change their opinions in different ways. So I think this this focus group research is really really important. It's important that it's done now. It's important that it's done from the outset because we need to be embedding the opinions of various publics in the development of this technology. But at the same time, we need to be realistic about what this type of work can deliver and recognise that that you know people's opinions on cultured meat now are not necessarily the same as they would be in five years' time. You could well still get that spread of of supportive and concern of ambivalences, but they might take different forms. So this is work that needs to be ongoing, and uh, and and essentially is says more about today than than predictive of the future. So cultural meat became much more visible in 2013 with the burger. I think there was some awareness of it before then, and certainly similar technologies in in science fiction, from very popular science fiction to more niche science fiction. The idea was kind of out there. Although I still think there's still probably many people today for whom it's not something they're familiar with. Um, but I think that for those who are aware of it, it does do the work of provoking them to reflect upon meat today in different ways. To think about the politics of meat, uh, to think about the impact of meat and their own consumption, what they feed their own families. And I think in that way, regardless of where the technology goes, it's already making some impact, some impact on how people live, on how they think, and, 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 and our ideas around climate change, our ideas around food consumption.